everyone, Adam here, So Wizard Podcast. We have another interview for you today, but before we dive into that, please remember to subscribe to our channel. really helps us grow our audience, and we do appreciate it. Today's interview is with Martin Wallstrom. Uh, Martin's a actor in this upcoming movie, Parallel. We actually did another interview with one of his co-stars a couple days ago. Uh, Parallel is this cool sci-fi with a kind of a thriller horror bent. Uh, the trailer looks amazing. We'll post it along with this interview. It's coming out December 11th via Aero Media. It is getting a theatrical release if you're one of the few people who's lucky enough to have a theater open near you right now. Otherwise, it's available on VOD. That's how I'll be checking it out. But I got to talk to Martin about acting, his process. He's actually in a foreign country right now acting in other projects because they're handling the whole pandemic thing a lot differently. And we do talk about that a little bit. So it's interesting to get another perspective and to talk to someone who was not shut down and wasn't told that they can't work. So that's a cool side of it too. I really had a nice time talking to this guy. He's an interesting guy. I'm looking forward to his movie. Check it out. Hey everybody, Adam here. So was your podcast. I'm sitting down with Martin Wallstrom. He's got a new really cool movie coming out December 11th, Parallel. Martin, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thank you for uh, asking. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time to come on. Uh, the movie looks cool, but before we get into that, I always like to start at the beginning and ask people how they got into uh, acting or the creative arts or whatever you're doing. I never had an, any sort of wish or dream to get into acting. Um, a film company came to my school looking for extras for a film. Um, I had no intention to to attend, uh, but my arts teacher, I met her in a hallway and she said, are you going to the audition? And I said, no, I'm going to off on a hike. And then she just looked me in the eyes and she said, I think you should go. Wow. Not on the hike, on the audition. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the start. Wow. Okay. That's a, that's a little unconventional <laughs> kind of pushed into it. Yeah. Did you find you had fun with the audition once you got there and realized it was the right thing or did it take some time to click? No, I think that it sort of, um, I mean, if I wouldn't have had like been, been on a callback, I think I would have just, I, I don't think I would have gone for any other films, but since I got the callback and I got the part, I was like, hmm, well maybe. And then I saw, look, you're getting paid to play. Um, it's like the best job ever. <laughs> That's awesome. So you kind of, it sounds like you booked your first audition. Um, was it hard pursuing things after that or did it just kind of come naturally to you? No, no, that, yeah, you're right. It was hard because it was, this was in 1997 and like basically where I grew up in, in Sweden, no um, like film companies, they didn't have web websites. They didn't have like email addresses. I had to have like the phone book to to go through and see, okay, here's one and send a letter. This is me. I'm 15 years old. I've done one film. And, you know, that's where it started out and just working my way through. So it, it took time and it was just difficult. Uh, but you learn a lot. Sure. Yeah, I bet. Where you were located in Sweden, I don't want to butcher your hometown name. I looked at it and I said, I'm going to leave that up to him. Um, oh, yeah? Did, did you have well, a lot? Of, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Back then, I was I was in the west of Sweden called Uddevalla. And they were back then starting a big project called Film in the West in Sweden. And that's also, if you saw some of um, Lars von Trier's and, and Thomas Winterberg's film, Films uh, Dancer in the Dark, Dogville with Nicole Kidman, and um, uh, films like that that became pretty famous, at least in, in Europe, were made in that region. And that was also my sort of way into it, that the film studio was close by. Okay, so you had some pretty good access there. Well, I tried to. Well, sure. I tried to get it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess that that should have gone without saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, where are you located now? Well, I've been I've been back and forth, um, in like from between New York and and Stockholm for the last five years. Uh, but I I got home uh, to Stockholm in basically October last year, and then started shooting 
four films here in Stockholm and we were filming throughout the, the early stages of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, cause Sweden, we've had a very sort of, yeah, liberal way of, of dealing with the pandemic, I'd say. So we never closed down in March, April, May. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you have four projects currently going on right now? Yeah, it's it's this series called Beck, and they're now releasing one film a month. Um, so number two is out today. Um, so yeah, I had a, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great cast. Among uh, among them is uh, Christopher Hivew from Game of Thrones, guy with a giant red beard. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's it's a great cast, and it, uh, yeah, I love doing it. Very cool. Is that tough to keep straight, four different films, or is it because it's in a series, is it all kind of the same story? Well, it's, since it's, it's the different, I mean, it differs from a TV series since basically they're all separate from each other. So we don't have that, that much of a like character development between, in between the films, like, well, this happened. Um, so we do them in Paris. Um, two each time and you do that in 45 50 days and you sometimes yeah it's hard to to keep things apart yeah are you the same character in all of them or i am i try to be i try to be right (laughs) you also have a lot of really high profile projects I, i guess i'll say american projects some might be filmed in canada i know that's a big spot did you have to move to LA for that or how did that work out? Like things like a uh, Mr. Robot, I'm sure everybody knows. And... Yeah, no, I mean, Robot fortunately was shot in, in New York. Um, could have been some other place, but since it's set in, in New York, Sam Esmail, the showrunner, wanted to, to shoot it there. So yeah, I had to, and which was a great thing, of course, mm-hmm. being in New York and doing a series that turns out to be a really fun and and a project that people seem to to like and um with you know so well written material uh, it was just a blast being there for four or five years it was wonderful it's good you had a good experience um what brought you to uh well america or la originally was it a part in particular or was it just the opportunity for more parts I think it's, I think it was the opportunity that I was back in 2012 and I've been, you know, I've been doing this since I was 14 and to university drama school, doing a lot of film TV. And then I have, uh, I've had, and, and like a lot of fellow Swedish actors and actresses have been very successful in, in plowing the way through. So I did a film in, in 2010 with Bill Skarsgård, where we played brothers and it was on the short list for an Academy Award. And I went over, found a manager who believed in me and, and we still work together. And and that was on, on that way. Oh, very cool. That's good to hear. You know, had good early experiences. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you also uh, do any kind of writing or directing? I know a lot of people had to pivot with the quarantine, but you were just saying that Sweden didn't really do the full shutdown like a lot of places did. No, we were, I'm not sure lucky is the right word because we've, we've had, a, a, if, you, if you look casualty wise, it's been, it's been pretty tough for, if you compare it to neighbors and, and other countries have been worse off, of course. Um, but we, we never shut down and I think it was a, it was a mixture of the way that Sweden, um, wanted to, to do this in the beginning of the of pandemic and also production company, they set up very strict rules. We had some cases, but they were very swift on, on, um, making sure that people were, you know, in quarantine and. And being tested and stuff like that so i didn't have to i mean what i do instead when i'm not like filming 
I haven't been writing that much, but I've been narrating a lot of audiobooks, uh, which I've done for the last seven or eight years. And I think it's a, uh, it's a wonderful way because you can do it anywhere in the world. Studios are now they're portable, and it's also it's the maximum concentration work you can do. You have to be in like for one hour, just trying to be in that mode of just like be in the story and also be very relaxed at the same time. So I, I, I kind of like that. That's, that's really cool. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to touch on that for a minute. Um, how, well, first, how did you get into it? Well, I was, um, it was like seven or eight years ago, a friend of a friend heard that they wanted, um, someone to narrate a book uh, and it was like they needed a younger voice and i'm from the west coast of sweden this was a diary of two two swedish journalists who went to um ethiopia i think it was yeah and they were imprisoned for 438 days Oof. and so that was their uh, diary and one of the journalists, uh, journalist, he read his own part, but the photographer was also there. He uh, he wanted to have an actor do it, so they were looking for a voice for that. And I tried out, and got it, and there was uh, the book was very successful, and I started doing more and more. And so now it's like, yeah, it's something I do. I do like five or six books a year, and it's it's a nice way of not having to travel across the world and you can set up your own schedule uh, and i think it's 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 more and more common and and audiobooks overall i think it's it's becoming bigger and bigger for sure yeah you know? what is the process like do you have to um you get just i'm guessing you don't just get a book and read it out loud i mean is it more like a script and you have to go over it in your head a few times before you yeah i try to i try to when i get it, it usually it's on a pdf i want to just read through because you don't want to end up being reading the main character and on the last page of 700 it says well uh, said mark in a his typically stuttering way <laughs> um like so so you really want to um, read through and just see get a grasp of what's the story um and then you have to see okay i'm going to do three hours in the studio well that'll equalize 60 70 pages the day before you try to prep um it could be you know maybe it's a lot of french you have to look at pronunciations and um, i do a lot of coloring on the characters sometimes it's pretty hard like it's four men in a room and it's not always it's like well said josh said uh, evan uh, it's it's um sometimes you have to use like a lower voice or um faster pace or something you have to have something for the character but you don't want to overdo it either because it's not it's not theater when you have a medium which is that close people have you basically in their head mm -hmm. you want to be subtle so that's what i try to do i mean i try to be subtle and and be prepared and and just not pushing the story onto the listener just try to be like more more soft with it um yeah and then you have to be very you have to be very forgiving uh to yourself because uh, you will do mistakes you will stumble over the same word seven times uh, but i learned that the hard way if if i get angry if i get frustrated it's just going to get worse so that's the number one thing you will suck and just <laughs> accept it and so that's what i what i try to do i feel like consistency and that has to be huge because if you end on an upward inflection or something and then the next part doesn't quite stitch together or if you mess up one tape but not another and they gotta marry the two yeah of course and, and nowadays i mean the 
technicians and, and they're all very skilled. Uh, but again, after doing this for a couple of years, you sort of, and a lot, it's also important to be very critical when it comes to, well, no, this was a little blurry or I mispronounced that one. Just do it again because it'll take you 10 seconds, but it will be there for, you know, as long as someone wants to listen to it. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, have you done any other kind of voice work? Well, I did for, well, that's secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> some, soft, some, soft, some software stuff. Oh, all right. Uh, but, I, but I can't talk about it. I might get kidnapped and you know, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. But we don't want that to happen. <laughs> all right. Well, let's jump into parallel then. Um, how did that come about for you? Well, I, I was sent the script, I read it. And, and first of all, I really I thought the part was interesting. Um, again, I could see why I was sent that part because it, of course, the art reminds there's some, you know, parallels to Tyrell in, in Robot. You have this guy and he's, he's, he's had, you know, he has grand visions so to speak but um i read it and then i saw isaac the director's two previous films and i thought he had a very interesting take on sci-fi i'm not a big sci-fi fan um but he had a very sort of philosophical theme and take on on his films and i think that was um that attracted me that you know there could be some sort of trojan horse another theme going into it um, and also I was I was so curious to try out a different genre okay so I think that was uh, yeah those three so you kind of like the challenge of it yeah I mean that's what I look mostly for when I for a new project like is there a challenge here is there something I can can I do something with this can I work with it um I did a, a project just a couple of months before this and I played a Russian soldier. And when my agent called me about it, I immediately said, no, I don't want to be the Russian soldier who speaks like this. And, you know, we've seen that. <laughs> and then he was like, no, no, it's in Russian. Uh, and I was like, but I don't speak Russian. Yeah, I know. So that to me was the challenge I needed to, sure, let's do it. So I, I just studied, <laughs> but I, I mean, I can't speak, speak Russian and, and I just had to study these lines for eight weeks as you study, I don't know if you can recite the first 1000 decimals for pi, um, you just had to, to do it. But that was, uh, again, that was a good challenge. And, and I, I, I think I, I saw a challenge in, in this character and script too. Would you say that's something you typically look for in a role is you want to push your boundaries a little bit? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I mean, I, I did play, you know, the straight guy for a couple of years in, in Sweden and sort of felt that I, I, I had a conversation with a friend today and we talked about just that. Why is, why is it more interesting to me, uh, maybe for other people too, to be doing supporting roles. Um, sometimes the, the leading man, the straight guy, it's just, it, first of all, it's really hard because not that much happens. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have, well, you have to have the audience. Uh, they want to relate to you. Um, mostly they're nice. Um, but supporting characters, you can, you know, they can be more colorful. Um, I, I wouldn't say this, it's, it's not true overall, but again, that's what I felt has been attracting me to do, you know, something where you can push boundaries. Uh, I like that you're kind of keeps your, your interests going. If you can branch out and push yourself rather than just kind of play it safe, probably helps yeah. you hone your craft too. Yeah, and you know, I like the feeling that I, I wake up in the morning and you know know that today 
I can really suck if I don't make this work. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's a nice feeling. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm 37. Maybe I'll, I'll grow up and, and, and be comfortable one day. I don't know. Well, you get a career where you can make believe for the rest of your life. So you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have um, Parallel comes out December 11th, uh, Selectors and VOD. That movie was made a couple of years ago. Do, do you know, um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. I don't want it to sound like a negative, like, like it was shelved because I'm sure it wasn't. But just what was the process like since it's been made, getting it out into the world? Well, I think we, we did, as you said, we did it and there was one... Actually, it was one full presidential um, election from when we made it until it, it's released. It was like Trump was, was um, elected during our production and it's released when he's on his way out. <laughs> uh, so, no, but I, I think, honestly, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, I think we all wanted it to come out quicker mm -hmm. of course um and i don't know why it's i think it's a business thing first of all that films are being bought in like clusters of more and now i guess releasing it into vod and and itunes and and is also now i think it's a it's a higher demand so i think it has to be some sort of business thing and, and I wouldn't be the right person to, to ask, but uh, of course we wanted to, to be released even because it's, I mean, it, it played in, in um, festivals. Okay. I and, figured that had to be part yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 It played for, for like, I think they started showing it in like 2018 or something. Okay. And it had a good festival run. Uh, so I have, I think you, you have to ask someone in, in charge. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Uh, did you get to attend any of the festival screenings? I did not. Uh, and question being, or did I? No. I don't know why. Um, there was one festival in Spain, in just south of Barcelona. But the thing was, I since I think I was in New York then doing robot. Okay. So I think yeah we had we were in the talks of of me going some, but it just didn't work out with the schedule. Scheduling wise, yeah, you keep busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any? Um, I know you're doing four movies now, so I guess asking what else you're working on is kind of <laughs> I'm sure you're very busy. Do you have any kind of um like reach or dream projects you've been going for that you could talk about? I mean, I don't want to mess up anything in the works but no i mean as things are right now uh it's it's pretty chaotic i guess mm -hmm. i always say when someone asks me what like dream park i always say that well spider-man i've always been a huge spider-man fan and it's it's contradictory because i said i'm not a sci-fi guy but i grew up with spider-man and now i think unless they do a reboot of a middle-aged um spider-man i think i'm it's over there's not gonna be any spider-man for me there's always a chance you got the the spider-verse there <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I i bought one of those comic books for my son and and one of the spider verses uh spider-man is a pig mm -hmm. so anything can happen exactly yeah i i really appreciate you taking the time uh i'm sure you got a million things to be getting on with with promoting this movie and working on four movies simultaneously and everything like that pleasure um, was mine do you want to tell everybody where they can find you and your work online yeah i think december 11th you can watch parallel it's on itunes and other vod outlets and also in select theaters very cool um you get a twitter handle I do. I think people it's I'm I'm missing, but it's um Martin Wallstrom on Twitter and on Instagram, it's Martin Wallstrom. 
Very cool. Thank you. Uh, once again, I really appreciate you taking the time. Good luck with everything. Thank you. You too. Have a good one. Bye. I'd like to thank Martin once again for taking the time to come on our show and to talk to me about his movie and his acting career and everything he's got going on, especially dealing with the time change. I'm not even sure what it is at this point, but it was awesome for him to compensate for us. I hope you enjoyed the interview as much as I did. I also hope you're going to be checking out Parallel December 11th, uh, VOD, Select Theaters, Viero Media. Also, make sure you listen to So Wizard Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. So Wizard Podcast can be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows. Now you can get the AFI 100 Best Movies countdown list a week early for Patreon members. And starting in January, I'm going to be doing another uh, video show with So Wizard's own Joey DiCarlo on Star Wars. Really looking forward to it. So jump on Patreon. It's a buck to start. You're not going to want to miss out. SubWizardPodcast.com is your one stop for reviews, recommendations, merchandise, videos, and more. Once again, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Sorry I keep hitting you guys over the head with that, but it really does help, and we really do appreciate it. We love hearing comments, so leave something on social media. Drop us a note in the comments here. All accounts can be found after the show and in the show notes. Thanks again.